Hi, my name is Rami Alfera. I teach saxophone at the University of Texas at San Antonio. I'm coming to you from the Alamo Music Center here in San Antonio. Today I wanted to talk to you about what to do when your child gets chosen to play saxophone in band class. So the first thing you should look at when your child gets chosen to play saxophone in band is whether or not you want to rent the saxophone or buy the saxophone outright. The first thing I would recommend is looking into your local band store and seeing if they have a rental procedure for saxophone. The idea being that while your child is learning to play saxophone, if they show a really strong interest in it, then that means that eventually you can buy the saxophone outright. Most of these places have a rent to buy. I know Alamo Music has that. So the money that you're putting in to renting the instrument goes towards the final purchase of the instrument. Also, one thing you should think about when you're renting is that the music stores will offer free repairs on the instrument while you're renting it. That means if your child is really clumsy or bangs it around a little bit or drops it, that will be likely covered during the, uh, during the rental period and um, they're more likely to do that when they're first learning the instrument. They're not as, um, how would I say, not as careful with their instrument as they should be. If you're looking at buying the saxophone outright, I would recommend sticking with a student model when they first learn. One, because they're more durable and uh, two, it's usually a much smaller investment. So the student model is a lot cheaper than a professional model instrument. They are both handmade, but the student models are much more durable. They could be um, dropped and have minimal damage happen, which is not ideal, but um, a student model instrument really is just a better choice when you're first starting. When you want to upgrade, it's when you're really serious about music. When your uh, child has shown a lot of interest, maybe they're taking private lessons and they've done really well in band class. Mm -hmm. When buying or renting a student model instrument, I would try to find either a Selmer or a Yamaha brand saxophone. Those are the two biggest names in the saxophone world for brands of saxophones, and that's for a good reason. It's because they're both very high quality and they're generally really well made. It is possible to buy really cheap saxophones online, but unfortunately, you don't have the brand name behind that, meaning that um, with those, you're not really sure if they're made from very high quality brass, if the brass is really durable and stiff because any slight movement in the keys or bending in the keys will make the saxophone virtually unplayable. So you need a really high quality instrument and that's something that you should not uh, cheap out on, unfortunately. They have some really fun looking saxophones and they're really pretty, but that doesn't make them sound good. So I would try to look for a Selmer or Yamaha brand instrument. And if you need to look for other brands, I would suggest talking with your local music store on what they would recommend for a beginner saxophonist. After the first few months or first six months of playing saxophone, if your child has shown an honest interest and they're always practicing and it seems like they'll stick with the instrument, I would look into buying the saxophone outright. So like I said, some music stores allow you to apply the rental fees towards the final price of the instrument. This is when you might think about doing that because that makes a lot of financial sense. Or just buying a Selma or Yamaha student brand instrument outright. This makes a lot of sense because it may end up saving you money in the long run. But I would say maybe about three to six months after they start playing is when you kind of know that they'll keep doing it if they'll continue practicing it. So for the next thing that I think about purchasing for your child for the saxophone is probably, in my opinion, the most important aspect of um, the initial purchases for the saxophone. And this is something that you would consider uh, an investment. Um, unfortunately, this is probably the most expensive part next to buying the saxophone. And that would be purchasing a good mouthpiece. Now the mouthpiece, I have one on here. It's the this black part of the saxophone here. It's generally they're made of rubber and they are what controls or holds and produces a sound on the saxophone. And this is an example of one of those removed. 
So the mouthpiece is extremely important on saxophone. Think of it as um, the engine in a car. If you have a really good engine in your car, a really reliable engine, then your car will run for a long time. But if you have a two-stroke lawnmower engine in a really awesome car, it doesn't really make a difference. You can't drive the car past 20 miles an hour. It's the same thing on the saxophone. If you have a great mouthpiece on a student model instrument, you could still create a really nice sound on the instrument. But if you have a chipped mouthpiece or a very cheap mouthpiece, it's much more difficult to create a good sound on the saxophone. It becomes more frustrating. So buying a good mouthpiece is probably the best investment you can make on the saxophone. There's one saying that I've heard a lot is the closer the instrument or closer the part of the instrument is to your face, like the mouthpiece or the reed, the bigger difference it'll have on the overall sound of the saxophone. So a good mouthpiece is paramount, and this is probably the best investment you can make. The brands that I would recommend for purchasing for mouthpieces would be the Van Dorn and Selmer brand mouthpieces. The Selmer brand mouthpiece that I would recommend for starting out is the Selmer Sea Star. It's a S80 Sea Star, and this is a very common mouthpiece that saxophonists start on. It produces a great sound and it's made out of great materials. The other mouthpiece that I would recommend would be the Van Dorn AL3 mouthpiece. This produces a very warm sound and it's extremely consistent made out of very good materials. Both of those mouthpieces are top of the line, also played by professionals such as myself, and are generally very consistent and very good sounding. Like I said, extremely important to buy a good mouthpiece to start on saxophone. So next up, what I would consider for the accessories for the saxophone are reeds. Reeds are the bamboo part of the saxophone here that's vibrating when your child is playing the saxophone. If you actually look at a reed, it's a fairly delicate part of the saxophone. You see here the tip of the reed is actually paper thin and very easily breakable, unfortunately. So what that means is that for the first month or so of playing saxophone, I would recommend getting a more affordable brand of reeds like the Rico reeds or even Hemke. Those two brands of reeds are still pretty good quality and um, you won't be out that much money when your child breaks the reeds, which is uh, pretty much inevitable. Once your child is more confident in assembling the instrument and not breaking the reeds as much anymore, I would recommend stepping up to a higher quality brand of reeds. And reeds have a really, really big effect on the sound of the instrument. So I would recommend stepping up to uh, Van Dorn style reeds. So this is a Van Dorn brand reed, regular blue box or the Diderio reeds. Both of those are very high quality and are played by professionals like myself. Those make a huge difference in the sound of the saxophone and are definitely worth the investment once your child is able to assemble the instrument and not break the reeds that often. So next up when purchasing items for the saxophone would be the ligature. And the ligature is the part that holds the reed to the mouthpiece. On this one, it's this leather ligature that's made by Rovner. And you can also look at these basic metal ones that are made by Yamaha. Both are great. And in my opinion, you could buy pretty much any metal ligature that'll fit the mouthpiece and reed on the, the particular saxophone. And it would be just fine. This doesn't make that big of a difference in terms of the saxophone setup. I would make sure to ask the clerk that you're working with at the band store or a band director or a private music teacher to recommend what kind of ligature to get or see which one fits a particular model, mouthpiece, reed, or whatnot. The next piece of equipment that you need to purchase for the saxophone is the neck strap. And its entire job is to hold up the saxophone while a child is playing. Two things that you need to look for is one, that the neck strap doesn't give or bounce so that it's sturdy and two, that it's made for the specific style saxophone that your child is playing, meaning the alto saxophone. Generally, when your child first starts playing saxophone, it's gonna be the alto saxophone that they learn. So I'll show you what it looks like with a very basic neck strap. This is a Yamaha neck strap, a good brand, very sturdy. So you hear that the neck strap just clips in to the neck strap loop right there. 
and all it does is hold up the saxophone. It's very important that you find one that's made for an alto saxophone if your child is playing alto saxophone, mainly because if they're really small or have a really small neck, then they might not bring up, be able to bring up the saxophone high enough. I see a lot of children with neck straps that are way too long, and it means that they have to bend down to play. So finding a neck strap that fits and that doesn't bounce is very important. And it should look like that. The next piece of equipment that I would recommend purchasing for your child would be a combination of metronome and tuner. And the reason for this is it helps your child practice the saxophone stay in tune and in time. And the combination of metronome and tuner that I would recommend is a Korg TM50, and it's this one. Works really well, the battery lasts a long time, and highly recommended. So the last thing that I would recommend purchasing for the saxophone would be the care kit. And a care kit includes all the small elements that are needed to maintain the playability of the instrument. So the one that I would recommend the most would be the Yamaha care kit. And this includes elements like cork grease and uh, swab for swabbing out the excess condensation of the saxophone and uh, polishing cloth among several other things, including a booklet and instructions on how to use all that stuff. So it's really quite a good deal and I would just purchase the kit in itself. If you want to save some money, um, this may not end up saving money in the long run, but if you want to try to save some money, the most important elements that you need to get and accessories for the saxophone that are not equipment needed to play would be cork grease and a swab. Here are four things to keep in mind after renting or buying the saxophone. Number one, student models, although they are more durable than professional models, should still be handled with care. So beware and make sure that your child doesn't drop or handle the instrument too roughly. Number two, make sure to store the saxophone in mild temperatures. Think of the saxophone as your baby and that you would only store the saxophone where you keep your baby. So don't leave the saxophone in a hot car or overly cold car, just in very mild temperatures. Number three, have band directors or private lesson teachers, i.e. the professionals, teach your child how to assemble the instrument. It is very tempting to take out the saxophone and assemble it yourself and blow a few notes, but it can be damaged very easily if it's not assembled in exactly the right way. So number four, I would recommend that you sign your child up for private lessons. This is a great way to foster and encourage interest in music and also a great way for them to appreciate saxophone even more. Many band programs offer scholarships for private lessons, and this may also be an avenue for you to pursue. So those are some basic points to keep in mind when purchasing or renting a saxophone and saxophone equipment. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Dr. Rami Alfera here at the Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. Thank you. Mm -hmm.